Before the year 2000, the Linda tribe was still a hunter-gatherer tribe who subsisted on severely diminished reserves of wild game and plants in their tribal area. Agriculture was mostly non-existent or very primitive and unproductive. The Linda tribe had the highest infant mortality rates of all tribes in Zambia and the average life expectancy of the Linda people was about 32 years. In 2000, many of the children between the ages of 2 and 6 were suffering from severe protein, vitamin, and mineral deficiencies and severely underweight for their ages. They had classic pot bellies, swollen feet, and reddish hair common with those deficiencies. There was little access to green vegetables or high protein foods. Milk was not available. Eggs when available were only permitted to be eaten by the adult men with nothing to sell. Most people existed in a cashless society where rats, mice, and insects were the only locally available protein foods. The Magilla Falls Agriculture Center was established in January of 2000 with the goal of empowering the Linda people by introducing plant and animal agriculture and methods for sustainable farming. The work of missionaries Paul Webster and Chalamoengo has significantly reduced malnutrition and infant mortality in this remote tribal region. On April 9, 2014, Chalamoengo, missionary and co-director of Magilla Falls Agriculture Center, tragically lost his life after succumbing to injuries sustained in a bus accident while traveling to see his family. His work at Magilla Falls has had a dramatic impact on the health and well-being of the Linda people in surrounding villages who feel a profound sense of loss with his passing. Over 2,000 people attended his funeral in this remote corner of Zambia, 40 kilometers from the closest paved road. This film is dedicated in memory of his life's work and lasting legacy. This is the uh, typical maize that we we're getting this year. This one is still damp. It'll have to dry for a few weeks on the stalk before we can harvest, but uh, uh, we've got a very good crop. We've strengthened the soil much here, and you can see that our phosphorus content is good because we get seed uh, production right, right up to the very tip of the year and uh, very full straight rows. Uh, this is a, shows that the soil is pretty good. We use a lot of organic material here, a lot of uh, cow manure, chicken manure, whatever we can find. And we do not burn the, the, the trash. We incorporate everything into the soil. So each year, these fields are getting stronger. And this is what's feeding the people in this area. So this is what we're trying to teach people to do. And uh, our, our, you know, we're, we're confident that we can do sustainable agriculture here in Africa. These were ch uh, Chala's test plots, and we went through an uh, experimental plot. Yeah, yeah, we went through an experimental plot. We can walk through here a little bit, just pick a couple years. I think I want to see what, just visually, if you want to get out. We evaluate on many things. One thing you'll notice about this, we have much lodging. The, 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 the years of corn, the corn stalks are breaking off, and that's not a good trait. You want a very strong uh, ear. This seems to have a small cob. 
and it has uh, uh, small kernels. And that's all right if you have enough enough uh, seed population. But in this case, the, the, there's too much lodge in it. We're going to have to, because as soon as ears fall on the ground, termites start getting at the ears. Yeah, this is 727. I like this a lot. You notice there's no there's no stock breakage. Uh, it's very even. There's a, it's a good population. Uh, looks like large, strong ears. They fill completely to the top. So this variety is one that will be interested in planting uh, large, large scale. This is very, very similar to the 719. You see some weevils, but they aren't doing any damage yet. Uh, very full, complete to the to the top. This is an excellent variety, and we'll we didn't we. This is the first time we planted it in just an experimental plot, and we'll. Uh, We'll plant large fields of it next year. All right, if we get ideal ears, they, they look very much like what we plant in Wisconsin or Indiana. It's a yellow variety. Some shrinkage but they're full ears. What we see where it's ideal, we seem to get two, two ears per stock and that can uh, increase uh, the yield. With mechanization, we've been able to, to get our first uh, commercial style corn planter. This is a very old John Deere corn planter we bought second hand, but it has greatly increased our ability to, to plant maize and soybeans and it has uh, improved the, the, and standardized the planting so we get better crops. Yeah. Iowa would be envious. <laughs> uh, this is a new uh, crop for, for Zambia. This is, these are called plantains. They look like bananas, but they actually produce a, a cooking uh, banana that, that can be sliced and, and is very good for breakfast. I think the Vim team can attest to that. Uh, they, we hope that someplace, sometime there'll be a good market here in Zambia for this, perhaps even through the supermarket chains. We've just, uh, we're coming into the dry season now, so it's very important to mulch around the trees to help hold moisture. And so we've used cow manure for that and that will help uh, uh, these trees survive the dry season. We don't have as good an irrigation system as we'd like to keep them constantly watered, but we'll try at least once a month to, to, to water these trees so that uh, they will continue to stay green and grow some. Uh, they should be able to produce uh, their first crop in 18 to, to 24 months uh, from the day they were planted. Wherever Chala traveled, he was always picking up plant stock and uh, seeds and so on. And here we see a row of avocados We've located them close to our chicken coop coops because then we can put the best uh, manure we have, which is chicken manure, around these trees to get them to grow as, as quickly as possible. This is a specialty item that we've been experimenting with. This is uh, ginger, and uh, it, it, it commands a high price in the, in the big city, and so we've, we've increasingly been growing it here. Uh, it produces a bulb, of course, that's used as a condiment for food, but it also, people believe it has very important medicinal purposes and are willing to pay a lot to, to use it, so we uh, are raising it here for people. These are our cabbages that, that we, if we have surpluses, we sell, but of course when we have training groups, we need to feed many people, so these cabbages especially came in handy uh, a couple weeks ago for Chala's funeral. Chala was always experimenting with high protein uh, crops like, like dry beans and so we, 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 we grow in little plots here and then the seed from this will propagate out into large fields or sell to or give away to, uh, to people in the area so that they can also test it. Papayas are incredible fruit, they have a lot of uh, vitamins and minerals. They also aid in, in digestion and, and e even Adolf's meat tenderizer uses the, the enzymes from papaya trees as a meat tenderizer in their, in their secret formula. And uh, so it's very good to help digestion. It's, uh, the seeds can be chewed and are actually uh, a, a vermicid. Uh, they kill internal worms. And so there's many uses for this plant besides uh, just eating and enjoying. We of course have... Uh... 
It's dry. Yeah, it's too dry. Mm. Yeah. But uh, we, we were fortunate to have many carrots, so we were, we've been serving carrots to our volunteer mm. missions team and and uh, for, for the funeral and so on. And this, is, this has also been helpful. It is. Uh, something that's very important, Chala always encouraged uh, students that had to do their attachments at Africa University. We would take on about four to five students every year. And uh, of course, a lot of the emphasis was on, on nutrition and on planting toward uh, improving the nutrition of local people. This is Swiss chard, mm -hmm. and it it's, uh, has, actually has more iron than spinach, mm -hmm. and, and it's very, very uh, long-lived. Yeah, it, it doesn't bolt like spinach does, and, and it's very drought and heat resistant. And we found that, that, it, that it, it can, it, because of that, it's very, very effective for, because many of the children, many of the women here suffer iron deficiencies uh, and extreme anemia, even to the point where they need blood transfusions. And we've, we've actually cured uh, people with anemia in just a few weeks by, by having them eat uh, Swiss chard daily. Chala's always experimenting on the edges of the garden with sorghum. Uh, out beyond here you see this is a grass that we introduced from Tanzania it's called Nepie Costa Rica and this is a forage grass that we chop and it helps keep our cattle through the dry season. We of course try to grow a lot of fruits these are tomatoes. Uh, tomatoes the last couple of years have been problematic because of funguses and viruses. Uh, we hope to get some some fruit from these, these tomatoes but we've had a real struggle and we're having to rely more on, on fungicides and so on to keep them healthy. All right, this is Chala's legacy here. Uh, we spent several years raising pine trees in nurseries and planting them out into this section. These are a Vietnamese pine, a tropical pine. They're very, they, they're very fast growing and resistant to the drought, to the dry season. Uh, this tree is only a couple of years old and already it's much higher than my head. And uh, even now you can see there's new growth even though we're going into the dry season. And uh, these trees will continue to, to shoot up. You see some there that are three, four times the height of a man already. We've got to be very, very vigilant for fires for the first few years. But once these trees get up a ways, they'll shade out the grasses underneath and we won't have to slash anymore. And this will become a, a, a mature forest. And uh, when we get to that point, then the trees will be safer. But right now, every year, we've got to be very vigilant for fires, uh, vandalism, and so on. But they have just two head of cattle in uh, the year 2000, and uh, they've been growing. The herd has been growing especially fast since uh, about 19 or 2005, and uh, so it's been a struggle to, to keep expanding the project, to keep everything housed properly, and and milking facilities and so on. And uh, now, with with the possible potential of a, of a grid electricity, we are looking at, at even buying milking machines because we're milking about uh, you know, even up to 20 head of cattle now. And uh, we have a total of, of 65 head or so now. Uh, this is the original milking parlor. We didn't have that many cattle, so two stalls was sufficient. And uh, this was the original barn here. And as you can see, the barn is, is collapsing. It was originally just built out of, out of poles and, and thatch. And uh, over the years, the thatch has, has gotten bad. We we're unable to replace it, and the building's starting to tip over. And so this building is scheduled to be... Uh, replaced with concrete and, and tin and a, a concrete floor but uh, we do things uh, as we can afford them and as, as we have the, the labor to do the work. Morning. Yeah, this is Sun King. You can come around and get a picture of him milking. He's been our, our milkman from the very beginning. Good morning. Good morning. We were only looking to him, so it's gotten to be quite a process uh, because there are so many. And uh, then we have this, uh, who's this on this side? Okay. Right. We've got a young lady on this side. Dude. I don't even know her name, but she's come to help right. milk this morning. Bye. Bye. Okay. And you also know how to milk, right? Yeah. 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 yeah, she can also milk. And uh, <laughs> so we've got milk maids. Uh, they seem to be good at it. Here's my uh, herder. He's a very good herder. He's a deaf mute, and uh, so we, we are always trying to help uh, some of the handicapped uh, uh, people in the village by, by providing jobs that they can do. And he's it turns out his gift is herding, and uh, so we, he can take the cattle out into the, into the forest. And even though he can't hear him, he never loses them. And so I don't know how he does it, but uh, he's a good boy. It's our new cattle barn, and. Uh, 
it's the biggest, probably one of the biggest buildings in the entire chieftaincy. Uh, we built it uh, open air uh, so that uh, uh, because we don't have cold weather here, you don't need walls around a cattle barn. And uh, but uh, right now it's holding probably more cattle than it should because we need to build a second uh, or a third structure. Uh, we. We've begun being able to use forage and feed our cattle, not only by grazing in the daytime, but the hauling in uh, feed at night. And this has really helped the, the Holstein cattle, which are accustomed to eating 24 hours a day. We use a deep compost system under our cattle. The, uh, we, we, we heavily bed the cattle. They're overcrowded now because, as I said, we need another building. But uh, by keeping the cattle locked in at night under a roof, we can manage to save the manure even during the rainy season, it doesn't wash away. And manure is so, so important to an integrated uh, agriculture project where we depend upon organic material to, to increase the fertility of the fields. And uh, we've had great success with this system. Uh, over the years now, we've uh, uh, been able every year to increase the, our, our production of maize and, and uh, soybeans. These are the milking cows on this side. This is young stock on this side. And then these are our oxen. We've received a gift of a pair of very large oxen from another mission that no longer needed them, but didn't want to kill them. And they knew that we would take very good care of them here. And so uh, we've been enriched by this beautiful pair. This is Santimu. And he's our, our uh, herdsman and uh, also works with the oxen. And he's been with us for, for many years here. And uh, he's been very helpful to, to the growth of this site. Yeah, we use very high genetic uh, uh, quality in our animals, trying to upbreed uh, uh, local animals. Uh, we're, we're increasing our milk production through this. The, the two secrets that are most important is, is genetics and, uh, and, and balanced feeding. Uh, to, to be a success in, in farming and so whether it's hogs or whether it's chickens we, we go for the high-end genetics and we also uh, uh, go for, for very good balance, balanced feeds for the animals and uh, this has been the success of the project. We make all our own feed on site and this uh, allows us to use local maize which is about 70 percent of the uh, uh, the, the feed mixture and so that's that saves transportation costs the only thing we bring in are the are the ingredients uh, the trace ingredients that we can't afford and so that reduces our our transportation costs and makes it possible for us to feed animals and, and even chickens uh, way up here 500 kilometers from from the source of feed This is our, our feed room where we mix uh, feeds for all of our animals. We, we depend heavily on concentrates. The key ingredient, of course, is maize. We shell the maize using this machine. And so, of course, it's powered with, a, with another of the uh, Chinese diesel engine. Uh, the cobs are even used. We grind these and use them for bedding for our chickens. Uh, once the, the, the maize is, is picking off the cob, we put it through a grinder. And then we, then we uh, mix the maize with, with other ingredients, soybean, wheat bran, uh, cotton cake, uh, depending on what, what the animals we're feeding, and then also trace elements. Uh, over here you see a pile. This feed is, is designed specifically for our dairy cow. This was our first tractor. It was used when we got it. We we're, we're struggled to, to keep it maintained. We had to put a, new tires on it. And, new hydraulic hoses and many seals with, because of age and heat in Africa the seals became brittle and started leaking and so we've had to replace. But you have another one too? No, this no. is the only tractor we've got. Tractor. It's really the only mode of transportation other than the oxen we have on the farm. Hey boys, come on. Come on. Hello. 
know. We have nine donkeys, and uh, we introduced the very first donkeys into uh, this part of Zambia. We had to ship them all the way up from the southern uh, edge of Zambia, where they were imported from Botswana. Uh, they've worked out very well here. The feed, because our, our pastures are better here, our donkeys are actually bigger than the original stock that we brought in. And uh, we've used them mostly for, for carting and, and hauling. They've been very, very good for that. And uh, uh, they're, they're a gentle animal. They're easy to train. Uh, we've got, we, 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 they, we harness them like we would horses. And uh, we've been very, very happy with, with how they've worked. Uh, we haven't sold anybody to any, any to anybody else, but we've got, get, we get many inquiries. And we, we are now ready to sell a few pairs. And so we'll see if we can. Now, sell pairs, but now they would, would they use them just for, for carting or would they use them for plowing or anything? Uh, they're, they're too light for plowing. We, we, we recommend oxen for plowing. Uh -huh. But uh, in some parts of the country, they do use them for plowing. Uh, we, we recommend that they be used as pack animals, and this would be very helpful in this uh, wooded place where people's fields are often far from their homes. Uh, uh, they uh, uh, can carry, uh, you know, uh, 200 kg, and uh, uh, that's much more than a human being carries mm -hmm. on their back. And we see these as a real liberation for women here, because it's mostly women that do the carrying, and and since they're the road, the, they have to operate on paths. They can't use uh, uh, wheeled transportation very much. And so, uh, these, these, these animals are willing animals. They're very friendly, and they really like working with people. You can see why they were featured in the stories of Jesus. Yeah, the pigs are, are sort of a... Uh, new project that we're introducing to the area. We're trying to show people to, use, to keep them in confinement, uh, but under very rustic conditions. It doesn't take a lot of money to raise pigs. Uh, just the simple shelters that they build for their own cookhouses is sufficient for a roof. And uh, again, it's the genetics. These, these have some of the best genetics in, in Zambia, and uh, also the feeding is essential. We can grow a uh, pig from, from the day of birth to 100 kilos in just six months. And uh, if a sow has 12 pigs, uh, that's over well over a thousand pounds of meat. Uh, and actually they'll, they'll produce two litters in a year, so we'll get out well over uh, 2,000 pounds of meat from a single sow over the course of a year. So they're very valuable. They're omnivores, so they can eat any kind of garden waste or, or kitchen waste. Uh, they, they, they love banana peels we found and, and we feed the, our banana peels to them. They, uh, uh, you know, of course are, are easy to, 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 to manage, they're, they're friendly and uh, uh, the meat is, is, is very good. We try to show people here because they don't have banks that the living animals can be banks because uh, if they have an emergency and let's say a funeral they can butcher or sell a pig in order to pay the expenses or when they send their children to school they can they can they can sell a pig or or, or, or some chickens or some goats in order to pay the bills that they need to pay so uh, these are walking banks because every day as they grow it's like getting interest on your uh, on your your, uh, your savings account and so uh, we find pigs to be a very stabilizing part of an integrated agriculture project. This uh, building was built because we were having too high of mortality in our young goats and by keeping them up uh, in the open air where they get plenty of fresh air we, we're hoping that we will reduce uh, some of the diseases that, that were killing the, the, the growing goats. We've just gotten a new litter of, uh, of kids and uh, we're very it, so far, everything looks very promising. Some of the some of the goats are supplemented with a little additional milk just to keep them strong. And so these boys are learning how how to care for baby goats. And they will be taking the goats out into the forest to, uh, along with the sheep, uh, to uh, to graze and, and browse on on the forage that's in the forest. Having access to water is, is essential to, to a farm, of course. And there's a lot of animals that need to drink, and, uh, so we do need very much to upgrade our water system. Uh, our pumping from the river needs, it needs to be uh, modernized and, and put underground. No, this water comes from the river and it's pumped, pumped up into these tower tanks at the very highest spot of the of the farm, and then uh, it's distributed through through pressure 
uh, pipelines to our chicken projects, our, our, our cattle projects, our sheep, goats, uh, pigs, whatever, and also to the houses. We don't drink this water. Uh, we also have a spring on the property where we carry our drinking water and it's boiled and, and filtered before we drink it. But uh, this is water for the cattle to drink and, and also for the houses for our bathing and, and cleaning needs. This building was the very first building built at this site. We built it as a shelter uh, for our dedication ceremony. And it had no walls in it, it just had a thatch roof. And uh, since then, it's, it, 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 we had about a thousand people that day, including the bishop and, and a, a, a VIM team who came all the way from Midland, Michigan to, to do the dedication of the farm. Uh, since then, it served as a dairy barn, it served uh, 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 other uses, but now it's rabbits and ducks, and so we'll go inside. We've had great success with uh, ducks and, uh, uh, recently, and so we have quite a, quite a uh, flock. Uh, the rabbit, the ducks live very symbiotically with the, with the rabbits because rabbits are messy eaters and they drop a lot on the floor and it, causes, it can cause fly uh, infestations. But the ducks go through the, the, the rabbit manure, eat the, the larva, and so we have no flies in here even though we have uh, a lot of animals. We select for the, for the California quality rabbit. It's a white rabbit with a black nose, black ears, and black tail. Our hope is to eventually start a, a tanning uh, process and, and using the rabbit skins for, for purses and women's apparel. Uh, good morning, Candy. Are you feeding the turkeys? Yeah. You doing a good job? Yes, sir. All right, because I want to see more turkeys when I come back in six months. I don't want to see that they die. I know, I'm sorry. <laughs> come in quietly, huh? Yeah. You know, sir? Mm -hmm. she, uh, she, she has the clove egg. 12 eggs. Yeah, and this one she has the egg, and this one. Oh, we got three uh, sitting, yeah. sitting hands here. Two again, that side. Two on that side. Yeah. Do you have some in the other buildings, or are they all here? No, I see. Yeah. Just here. Mm -hmm. These turkeys were brought down from, from Congo and we've had great success with them. It was a surprise that they would do so well and be such, easy, such an easy animal to manage because they mostly graze and they stay close to the buildings. Uh, they grow well. We're selecting for the white breed. Originally they were all brown or black and uh, we've, uh, we've started selecting for, for the white color and so we'll have animals that we can see easily in the bush. Ben, he's our, our manager of our chicken buildings. We have to have high security here. Chickens are very valuable. And uh, we have to have night watchmen and, and lock doors and, and uh, do double accounting on everything. Uh, we've got about a thousand chickens in this building and about a thousand in the next building. And uh, these chickens can lay, uh, on average, about uh, uh, 100 chickens can lay about 90 eggs or 85 eggs a day. Uh, that's the, the, it's called the egg laying percentage and, and we expect it to, to, the chickens to lay over 80, 85% uh, on any given day. Uh, we used a, a deep litter, litter method that was popular in America in the 1950s. Uh, we, we put down bedding and, the, and the, the, the manure from the chickens just mixes with the bedding and dries and so it makes a good environment for the chickens. We have automatic watering systems here for the chickens that runs on gravity and uh, we have to have artificial lighting for a number of hours every night to maximize uh, egg production. So it's quite an involved process. Uh, we mix our own feed, but we need certain special trace ingredients that have to come all the way from the Saka. And uh, through this we were able to, to get as, about as good egg production as, as any professional egg laying farm in America. Chickens take a lot of uh, management skills. They have to be vaccinated uh, against many diseases. Uh, their, their bills have to be clipped so that they won't uh, cannibalize each other or break eggs. Uh, so there's a lot of tricks and, 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 and 
work that takes it, it takes to raise chickens successfully. And we've perfected these all very far out in the bush where people told us you'll never be able to raise chickens here. And we've done this now for several years. Uh, when we started, we couldn't hardly sell 100 eggs in a week. And now we're selling uh, about 2,000 eggs a day. And they're all going into the villages here where people before had no access or, or very, very little access to eggs. We're seeing uh, increased growth in children. Uh, we're seeing less infant mortality. Uh, we're seeing longer uh, longevity and health among adults. Uh, women are doing better because they're getting more protein in their diet. And so uh, this has been a godsend to the region. This is, a relative all right. this is our egg house. We, and virtually all the eggs are going into the villages around us. People come on bicycles and uh, they carry away the trays, uh, up to 20 trays on a bicycle. Uh, ben is, is sorting the eggs and he keeps careful records of each of the two houses to make sure that the egg laying percentage stays high. This is Hamilton. He's our site manager. He's been with us for many years now. Uh, it's going to fall on his shoulders to manage this project over the next six months while I'm gone and of course with Chala gone. This is going to be very difficult, but he's been very responsible. He's handling uh, payroll and, and, and employee management, and of course also watching out for health of animals and, and, and managing the animals is a great task. And so we're very, very blessed to have him. He has some natural gifts, and uh, uh, we, we, we ask your prayers to keep him strong because he's the linchpin now in this project. All right, this was Chala's latest project. Um, Originally when we came here people were so poor that they couldn't afford to, to, to eat chicken very often at all. But as uh, incomes have improved in the area and as more government workers have come in for the school, for, for some construction projects, uh, uh, cell phone tower and so on, we have more demand for meat. And so we're raising these, these, these broilers. These also again are the highest genetics available in the country. We buy day old chicks and these can grow up to, to meet uh, 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 eating age. Uh, how old are they now, Hamilton? These are, uh, five weeks. These are only five weeks old and we've begun to, to, to butcher some of the larger ones. Uh, by the time they're eight weeks old, we, we, we hope to have sold all these. Mm -hmm. uh, but these, this is a new project and it, it, it's serving the community greatly. Thank you. For the food. For the food brought to us. Brought to us. Thanks very much. Thanks very much. As you partake it. As you partake it. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Very good, all of you. Huh? Now you take your turns, huh? All right, you come up and get your cookie. There you go. You come. You come right down. Yeah. Can you hold it? Can you hold that? That's a lot of milk for a little boy. Yeah. Okay. All right. You go over there. Oh, it's awesome.